Hey, Internet. The bookshelf next to me has been appearing on my channel for a few years now, and it's finally time that I make an in-depth video showcasing my entire collection and explaining what makes it so special to me. When you search for shiny Bandai Pokemon figures on YouTube, the only two relevant results that show up are a pair of videos that I made on the topic a few years ago. Every other result that pops up is completely irrelevant to the topic of shiny Bandai Lotto figures. Even when you search for the term in Japanese, it's hard to find any relevant results, and the first relevant result that pops up has less than 500 views. Suffice it to say, it's very hard to find any information on this topic on YouTube, as well as the internet as a whole, which is why I wanted to make this video. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is clear off my computer desk so that we can sit down and take a close look at these figures and I can explain in depth what exactly is so special about them. So here we are at my newly cleaned desk. But before we can cover it in Pokemon figures, I need to explain a few things to you. You see, there are three types of figures on my shelf. There's Tomy figures, which were the first figures I ever collected. There's Bandai figures, and then there's Bandai Lotto figures, which are going to be the primary focus of today's video. So let's get a closer look at my desk, and I'll explain to you what the differences between these three types of figures are. This is a Tomy figure. Tomy figures are roughly an inch and a half to two inches tall. They're made of solid PVC, and they have an engraving somewhere on them indicating that they were manufactured by Tomy. I got this Groudon figure at the Nintendo World Store in New York City about six years ago. This is a Bandai figure. In general, these are slightly bigger than their Tomy counterparts, although this isn't always the case. Bandai figures, similarly to Tomy figures, have an engraving indicating that Bandai made them, but their most key characteristic is the fact that they are all hollow. Because of this, they're often affectionately referred to as finger puppets, though the official name for this product line is Pokemon Kids. However, for this video, I'm simply going to call them Bandai figures. Now, the last type of figure we have to look at is Bandai Lotto figures. This is a Bandai Lotto figure. It's the exact same as the figure next to it, except it's a shiny Groudon instead of a regular Groudon. Pretty cool. Now, aside from being shiny, what's so special about this Lotto figure? Well, that has everything to do with how these were obtained back in 2003 when they were manufactured. This Groudon figure could be purchased from any toy store for a cheap retail price. Hundreds of thousands of them were made. This shiny Groudon Lotto figure, on the other hand, was only available to residents of Japan and could only be won via magazine sweepstakes. If you were subscribed to a magazine that participated in these sweepstakes, you'd fill out a form found somewhere in the pages, you'd enclose a little bit of cash, and you would mail that form to Bandai. If you were lucky enough to be chosen as a winner, you'd receive a package in the mail a few weeks later containing your prize. A total of 62 shiny lotto figures were released via sweepstakes from 2002 to 2015. While it does seem that this program is over, a seven-year break since the last sweepstakes doesn't necessarily mean that they're finished. To give you a little bit more insight into the nature of these sweepstakes, I've managed to collect a number of the boxes that these prizes came in when they were shipped to the winners. These boxes looked like this. These prizes were released in sets of varying numbers of Pokemon. For instance, this here is the box that was given away with the most recent sweepstakes back in 2015, and it only came with one figure. This box is from the sweepstakes that was done in 2012, and included three figures. These two boxes are from way earlier in the life cycle of Lotto Bandai figures, these are from 2003 and 2005, 
and these sets included five figures each. Now if you know anything about marketing, you'll be able to tell that these boxes were never sold in retail stores. There's nothing pretty about them, there's nothing to grab your attention, and that's simply because these were never on store shelves. They were simply sent out to winners. I even have a copy of the congratulations letter that came with this set of three figures in 2012. Let's take a look. It's got Pikachu in the background and it says something along the lines of, you win. Now if some of you can read Japanese, uh, I'd love to see what this actually says. I know these tiny characters above the regular characters are to make it easier for kids to read Japanese or something while they're still learning all the characters, but my friend Shinsuke has been out of town for a while, so I can't get him to translate it for me. But yeah, these are the boxes that these lotto figures came in. I haven't collected every box because these are significantly more rare than the figures themselves, but it's pretty cool that these were clearly not marketed to be eye-catching and to be sold in a retail setting. So, now that I've explained the difference between these three types of figures and the rarity and significance of the lotto figures, let's go ahead and take a look at my completed collection of all 62 Bandai lotto figures. I had a little bit of trouble deciding what order to show you these in. I could have showed you them in the order that they were released via the sweepstakes, but for simplicity's sake, we're just going to look at them in Pokedex number order. All nine of the original Kanto starters got Lotto figures, so we'll take a look at those first. Charmander line is very interesting. They chose to make Charmeleon a lot more orange than he is yellow. In fact, his color is almost identical to regular Charizard. But here is one of my favorite figures out of all the Lotto figures. Shiny Charizard is one of the most legendary shinies ever devised. The most significant difference in the Squirtle line is the color of their shells. One of my favorite things is how dark the green is on Blastoise's shell. After the starters, Gyarados is the next Kanto Lotto figure that was released. Gyarados is actually among the rarer Lotto figures as it was released in much smaller numbers than many of the other figures were. And that's actually it as far as Kanto Lotto figures go. They only made 10 of them. So I'm going to go ahead and push these to the back of my desk. Go ahead and put the comparisons back on the shelf because they aren't really the focus of this video. They're not Lotto figures. And let's go ahead and move on to the Johto figures. Uh, we have a slight problem. The Lotto program didn't come out until 2002, when Ruby and Sapphire had already been released in Japan. So at that point, they weren't really focused on Johto, and as a result, they literally never released one single Johto Lotto figure. If you would like to see a shiny Bandai figure from Johto, stay tuned to the Honorable Mentions section near the end of this video. For now, let's just move on to Hoenn. Naturally, being the most current generation at the time, Hoenn also got all nine of its starters in shiny lotto form, so we'll take a look at those next. The Trico line is so amazing. It's for sure my favorite shiny starter line. The red accent is just so eye-catching. The Torchic line is next. While these aren't perhaps as dazzling as the Trico line, I still think they're excellent shinies. I think they did a particularly amazing job with Blaziken's shiny. I absolutely love how dark it is. And here's the Mudkip line. You can't go wrong with that classic blue to purple color swap on shinies. I think Swamper looks so sick. 
So, here they are. All nine shiny Hoenn starters. But what if I told you we weren't finished? I'm gonna put away the middle and final evolution Hoenn starters to the back of my desk, and we're just gonna focus on the first evolution starters for a second. All of the Hoenn starters I just showed you were released in 2002, right around the time that Ruby and Sapphire were released in Japan. Well, skip ahead about three years when Emerald is being released. In an attempt to keep building hype for the new Pokemon generation, alternate forms of the shiny starters were released in a separate lottery. I call these the playful pose forms. They were made in much smaller numbers than their 2002 counterparts, and are thus much more rare and valuable. The Trico crossing his arms became a slightly fatter Trico, holding one of his arms in the air. The Torchic, who was just kind of standing there, got a counterpart, who's just kind of sitting there, and smiling. Mudkip is also just sort of standing there. His playful pose is in some sort of ready-to-attack position. I don't really know what this Mudkip is doing here, but these playful poses make a grand total of 12 shiny Hoenn starters that were released via lottery. I'm just absolutely in love with these Lotto figures and all their little quirks. And in case you were wondering, yep, the playful pose Lotto figures had non-shiny counterparts that could be purchased at a toy store, just like every other Lotto figure. So here it is, the complete set of shiny Hoenn starters with the additional playful pose variants of the first evolution starters. Very cool. Let's go ahead and move these to the back of my desk and continue delving through Hoenn. I'll point out that with the starters alone, there's already more Hoenn shiny lotto figures than there were in the entirety of Kanto. But Hoenn doesn't stop at 12. Let's see what's next. Beautifly and Dustox are next. I absolutely love these figures. The colors are so bright and vivid and I think they absolutely do justice to how cool these shiny sprites look in the actual games. I absolutely love this next shiny. Shiny Lotad. Lombre and Ludicolo were not given shiny figures through this lotto promotion, just Lotad. That's almost a little bit arbitrary, but at the same time I just love the decision. Lotad has such an underappreciated shiny, from the green changing to an aqua blue, and the blue of his body changing to purple, this is just an excellent shiny sprite, and I'm so happy that it's a lotto figure as well. Gotta love Lotad. Up next are Taylo and Swellow. I am just so happy that these got made into Lotto figures. Every generation has its beloved breed of normal type birds, and I think Taylo and Swellow have the best shiny sprites of any of those. I love the way Taylo has these large, childish eyes, and Swellow has these sharp, determined eyes. It's really like it grew up when it evolved. Next up we have Skitty which is a very interesting choice to include in the Lotto program. And here is our shiny Skitty. This is another situation where the shiny Lotto figure is a little bit different than the shiny sprite in the games. In the games, shiny Skitty is more of a reddish pink, and here shiny Skitty is literally just orange. There's not any pink left in that. Which is very, very cool. I love this skitty figure. Next, we have Minin and Plusle. These are super unique entries in the Bandai Lotto figure series. I think Minin is fairly faithful to its in-game shiny sprite. Its skin does get a little darker in this figure, and I don't think that that happens with the shiny sprites, but Plusle is just straight up a better shiny in this figure than it is in the games. In the games, its ears and hands turn a dark red. But with this figure, it's purple. How cool is that? These two are absolutely amazing. 
But let's take a quick break so I can show you these two figures. They're exactly the same as the other ones behind them with a twist. I'm gonna have to go to a dark place to show you this. So we are now on the floor of my windowless bathroom. I'm gonna give these guys a bright shine from a strong flashlight and we're gonna turn it off. <laughs> How cool is that? Glow in the dark, mining and plusle. These were not lottery figures at all. You could just buy these at stores, but they're still quite rare despite not being shiny. Man, that looks so cool. Up next is Roselia. What a cool shiny to include in the lotto program. Roselia has such a cool shiny sprite, but my favorite thing about this figure is the color of the roses. On this Roselia, the roses are light purple and dark purple. Whereas on Roselia's original shiny sprite, the dark purple rose should be black. Now this isn't an error with this figure. Every lotto shiny Roselia figure ever released had light purple and dark purple. But for whatever reason, they chose not to make this rose black how it is in the games. And I think that just makes this more unique of a figure. Up next is Whale Lord. They didn't include a Whalmer, but they included a Whale Lord. And look at his tiny little flipper. What is he gonna do with that tiny little thing? You can't tell me this guy swims. Man, Whale Lord is such a cool addition to this set. This is definitely in my top five favorite Bandai Lotto figures. Shiny Flygon, check that out. It is so faithful to the way its shiny sprite appears in the games. I am just in love with this Flygon figure. I think Flygon is a model of how to do a shiny sprite right. This is also one of the rarest, hardest to come by shiny Bandai Lotto figures, so I think that's completely fitting for a Pokemon of Flygon's stature. This is just so cool, I can't stop looking at it. Up next we have Cacnea. This is a very interesting figure to include in the set. Looking at this shiny Cacnea really kind of just makes me crave chocolate ice cream. Really, really cool figure though. I'm so glad they decided to make this into a lotto figure. Here's another one of my favorites from the Hoenn set. Shiny Saviper. This is just so cool. It's another one of the figures that's not perfectly consistent with the way its shiny sprite looks in the games. In the case of the yellow on Saviper, it went from a sort of goldenrod yellow to a pale yellow, when really that pale yellow should be green if it was to be consistent with its shiny sprite in the games. That being said, I still really love this Saviper figure. There's just one problem. Where's Zangoose? They released a shiny Saviper Lotto figure and completely overlooked the fact that Zangoose is Saviper's counterpart and absolutely deserves a shiny figure just as much as Saviper does. I really, really wish that they had made a shiny Zangoose figure, but I'm still really happy that this Saviper exists. Next, we have a very interesting one. Shiny Corefish. I'm not sure what made them decide to include Corefish in this series. It's not exactly the most stunning shiny ever, but I think it's just so unique and cool that Corefish is among the elite ranks of Charizard and Flygon and some of the cool ones you guys haven't seen yet. Up next we have Chimeco. I am absolutely in love with the idea of putting shiny Chimeco in this series. Chimeco is such an elusive shiny in 3rd gen. It's only 2% on Mount Pyre, with only a mediocre repel trick, something like 3% if I recall correctly. But one of my favorite parts of this figure is that instead of having Chimeco float, they just have him sitting on a rock. Now we're getting into the coolest of the cool when it comes to Hoenn shiny lotto figures. Here's Absol. I am in love with this figure. 
with everything from the red trim to the blue eyes, it just doesn't get better than this. I actually met a close friend of mine here on YouTube. He's a huge fan of the Pokemon Absol, and he's the one who clued me into the existence of these figures. What was his username again? Was it like Absol discusses pocket monsters or something like that? I don't know, I forget. Oh yes, now we're talking. Snowrunt is my single favorite shiny sprite in all of Hoenn. I am so glad that they decided to make this into a shiny Lotto figure. This is definitely among my favorite Lotto figures. The difference is just so stark from the normal sprite to the shiny sprite. It is a model shiny. I managed to finally get one of these in game during my Nick quest a few years ago, and I managed to get the shiny figure a few weeks later. Gosh, I just love it. And now we have the last non-legendary shiny lotto figure from Hoenn, Salamence. How cool is that? Salamence is definitely one of my favorite pseudo legendaries, and I'm super glad that they decided to make it into a shiny lotto figure. It looks really cool. Now let's take a look at the first shiny legendaries of this video, Latias and Latios. I'm absolutely in love with this pair of shiny figures, mainly because they are also deviant from the way their shiny sprites look in-game. Latios is supposed to be orange, and they straight up made her yellow. And Latios is supposed to be green, and he's just barely more green than his non-shiny counterpart. But the triangles on their chest are consistent. There's a slightly bluish green triangle on Latias's chest, and a full-on yellow triangle on Latios's chest. So, they check out. And now let's take a look at the last of the Hoenn shiny Lotto figures. These are all absolutely stunning and perfectly faithful to their in-game shiny sprites. I mean, you could not ask for better than this as far as Kyogre, Groudon, and Rayquaza go. These are beautiful, beautiful figures, and their prices and rarity definitely reflects that. Groudon, Kyogre, and Rayquaza are much harder to find than the majority of the other Hoenn figures, with the exception of maybe Absol and Flygon. These are just beauties. Well, that does it for Hoenn. Here is all the figures we've looked at so far. It's time to move on to Sinnoh. Unlike Kanto and Hoenn, Sinnoh only got its first and final evolution starters as shinies in the Lotto program. I think Turtwig's line looks great. Torterra is very pale and doesn't quite have some of the yellowish and bluish tones that he has in his main series shiny sprite, but I like the way it looks. Turtwig is a little more faithful to his in-game shiny sprite, but one of my favorite things about this figure is the fact that the leaves on the top of its head are slightly different color. I just love that, that looks so cool. Here's Chimchar. I really like the way Chimchar looks, it reminds me a lot of the playful pose alternatives to the Hoenn starters. Infernape is very interesting, I love his purple feet. Very cool looking, both of them. And here's the last of the starters, Piplup and Empoleon. I'm not upset that they omitted the middle evolution starters from this promotion. I don't really think we're missing out on having Grotal, Monferno, and Prinplup in the set. I really love the, the pose of this Piplup too, it's so cute. A fun fact is that the first evolution Sinnoh starters were among the most numerous of these figures ever made. However, the final evolution starters are significantly rarer than their first evolution counterparts. Up next we have Pasharisu. I think this was an excellent choice from Sinnoh to make into a shiny figure. Pasharisu is a fantastic Pikachu clone. 
One of my favorite things about this figure is that they had the attention to detail to actually give the shiny Pashirisu some darker cheeks. Next, we have another cute Pokemon, Buneary. I love this figure, and I love this Pokemon's shiny sprite. I think its shiny goes hand in hand with the energy that Buneary gives off as a Pokemon. I love the pink tones, and I love the little tail poking through in the back. Up next we have Krogunk. I'm just so glad that they decided to make this into a shiny figure. Krogunk is such an excellent addition to Sinnoh. Not only is poison fighting something new that we had never seen before, but they gave Krogunk a spectacular shiny sprite. I only wish that they had made Toxicroak into a shiny figure as well, but I'm still very, very happy with this Krogunk. We're nearing the end of the Sinnoh Pokedex now. Here's Electivire. How cool is that? Electivire is a sick Pokemon. I absolutely loved that they added final evolutions to some of the original Kanto Pokemon in 4th gen. Electivire is just so sick. I'll always remember one time we were all playing Pokemon Rumble and my friend SHZ found a shiny Electivire and he flipped out. Rightfully so, Electivire is so rare in that game. And now we have Magmortar. Magmortar is just as cool as Electivire in my book. His figure here looks so cool. Look at that face, you know he's up to no good. And his shiny sprite is no different. He just looks devilish. But one of my favorite things about this shiny figure is the fact that it's it's got yellow on it. Shiny Magmortar is completely pink. It's different shades of pink, but it's pink through and through. And they decided to leave some yellow on him in this figure, which honestly, I think that looks even cooler. I love this shiny. Up next is Sinnoh's newest evolutions, Leafeon and Glaceon. I think the decision to include these in the Lotto program was mainly just to raise awareness that new evolutions had been created for the first time since second gen. But as far as these shinies go, I mean, they're, they're bad shinies, let's be honest. These figures are pretty accurate representations of what the shiny sprites look like, and Leafeon and Glaceon are just bad shinies. When you look at shinies like Espeon and Umbreon, it, it really is a disappointment that they didn't go further with the shiny sprites of Leafeon and Glaceon. And it's sad that these are the only evolutions that got shiny Bandai figures, but... I'm not going to complain too much because they still are cool to have, and I do like Leafeon and Glaceon as Pokemon. I just wish they had better shiny sprites. So Leafeon and Glaceon actually wrapped up the last of the Sinnoh shiny lotto figures. And we are almost done with the entire collection, but not quite yet. Since we're done with 4th gen, that means 5th gen's gotta be next. It's Unova time. Out of all the amazing Unova Pokemon, only the first evolution starters received shiny Lotto figures. As tragic as this is, I think it makes these figures that much more special. I think Snivy is my favorite, but Tepig also looks amazing. And here's something interesting. Remember this congratulatory letter I showed you earlier in the video? This happens to be the exact same letter that was sent out to the winner of these three figures. And what's even cooler is this is the box that those figures came in. They were only released as a set, and the winners got this exact box in the mail. This one is actually sealed, so it contains brand new pristine copies of those figures in it. I actually have a few more of these that I'll show off later in the video. So, now that we've seen Unova, does that mean we're done with the entirety of the Bandai Lotto figures? No? There's actually one more figure, and it's the rarest, hardest to find out of all the Bandai Lotto figures, despite it being the newest. Let's take a look. And now we move on to 6th gen, and Mega Rayquaza. This figure just looks awesome. It's from the most recent lottery done by Bandai, back in 2015. Only 1,000 of these were made, and that is known. They are very hard to come by, 
I scanned auction sites for months before I finally found one for sale. I completed my collection of the other 61 figures long before I found number 62. I don't like Mega Rayquaza quite as much as I like regular Rayquaza, but the fact that this figure is so rare made it more alluring to me, and I had to get it anyway because it's the last Bandai Lotto figure. Unlike the previous sweepstakes which required you to be a magazine subscriber to enter, you could buy tickets for this sweepstakes by buying retail available Bandai figures. I happen to have the box that this shiny Rayquaza came in from the sweepstakes. You can see it says 2015 at the bottom. I believe this was the only lotto ever done that only had one figure as a prize. In all other cases you got a set of at least three I believe. So I'm super happy to have this shiny Mega Rayquaza figure because it was a pain to get. I also happened to have found a official promotional advertisement for the campaign to get this shiny Mega Rayquaza. So I will put that on screen now for you guys to look at. And now, putting this Mega Rayquaza in the back of the desk where it belongs, ends my review of all 62 shiny Bandai Lotto figures. There they are. But that's not the end of this video. Not even close. Now I can explain the process I went through to even get all of these rarities in the first place. So, how did I complete this entire collection of 62 shiny Bandai Lotto figures? Well, it all started in early 2019 when I found a set of five of these on eBay that was criminally underpriced. I bought it and did a little more research and realized that there were dozens of these figures and I was dead set on getting them all. After I bought that first set, it took me a year and a half of spending hundreds of dollars a month to finally get that 60 second figure. So, what was my strategy? If you want a lot of shiny Bandai Pokemon figures, you've got to buy lots. And I don't mean that as in parking lots. I mean it as in Lot of Nine, Ben 10, Cartoon Network, Omnitrix Toys, Rare Toys. You see, only on one occasion did I buy a figure completely by itself. And that was for the figure that I spent the most amount of money on. This guy, right here. Outside of this guy, every single figure you see on this table was purchased in a lot of at least three. Sometimes it was three, sometimes it was five. My most expensive lot I ever bought had 40 figures in it, and about 32 of them were dupes. Buying figures in this fashion has some consequences. If you think I only have one of all the figures behind me, you're dead wrong. Let's take a look at my entire Shiny Bandai Lotto figure collection. So once again, I'll show you. All 62 figures are still there on my desk. Now let's take a look at the dupes that I've accumulated throughout the nearly two year process of finishing this collection. There's one bag, there's another bag, and there's bag number three. Let's just take a look at these. They're all filled with shiny Bandai figures that I've showed you at some point in this video. Now at one point or another, I've gone through all of these bags and I've chosen the best condition of the dupes to go on my shelf. So all of these figures are at least in a little bit worse condition than the one I've showed you, but they're all acceptable. They're also each in their own individual bags because they will get scuffed up against each other if I don't store them that way. But yeah, if you look in these bags, there's not a single non-shiny figure. See if you can count the Charizards in here. Alright, so now we're going to do something I've actually never done before. We're going to take all of these duplicate figures out of the bag 
and we're gonna put every single shiny Bandai figure I have on the desk and take a look at them. Again, I have never done that before. I don't even know how many I have. I have at least two of almost every figure, but some of them, like Mega Rayquaza, I only have one of. But I expect this to at least double the amount of figures that are sitting on the desk. It's probably gonna take me 20 minutes to unbag every single one of these figures, but I'm gonna do it. So here is all the bags that I just emptied. There's a lot of them, and pretty soon I will be filling them back up with figures. But I've created the most beautiful display I've ever seen, so we're gonna pan over it now. Wowie! I've never taken the time to set out all of my duplicate shiny Bandai figures before, but this is a beautiful display. I did a count, and there are approximately 189 figures out on this desk. I think there's about a 75% chance that that count is correct, but it's surprisingly difficult to count this many figures. 189 is the number I'm going with. But there's a few things on this desk I haven't showed you yet. Like this stack of boxes. Let's talk about those for a second. These bottom three boxes are from 03 and 05. They're all empty and they came with sets of five figures. This box right here came with the Mega Rayquaza. And these six boxes are all identical. I showed you one earlier in the video and told you that it contained Snivy, Tepig, and Oshawott. Well, there's actually six of those boxes here, and I have six identical congratulatory letters here. You see, I was unable to find any of the Unova shiny Bandai figures until I found a seller on a Japanese auction site who was seemingly sitting on a gold mine of these. He was selling these for $40 each, brand new, with the original congratulatory letter. And that was such a steal. So I bought one, and I opened it, because I needed the figures inside. A few weeks later, he posts another one for the exact same price. So I bought that immediately, and I opened that too, because I had a friend who really wanted those figures but he didn't want Oshawott. So, I think I gave that Oshawott to a different friend. Either way, two of these boxes are open, and the other four... are sealed. I bought these for the amazing price of $40 each, and I kept buying them, until that seller ran out. He seemed to be sitting on exactly six of them. That has to be one of the best deals I found in my entire time collecting these figures. Because I can tell you, these go for at least 200 online if they're sealed. 
though I have no immediate plans on selling them. Now, these four boxes are sealed. There's three figures in each, and there's 189 figures down here, which means there are a total of 201 figures on this desk. That is sick. All jokes aside, allow me to make a bold claim. There are 201 shiny Bandai Pokemon figures on the desk behind me. Throughout building this collection, I have scoured the internet, I have done loads of research, and I have seen pretty much every similar collection that people have posted to the internet. And I officially assert that I have more shiny Bandai Lotto figures than anybody else on this planet. Throughout my research, I only found two people who even showed off a complete collection. A complete collection is 62 figures. Again, I have 201. This isn't to boast, but it's just to show how little information there is out about these figures. There very well could be somebody, probably in Japan, who has more of these than I do, but they've never made themselves known on the internet. I would love it if someone would come and prove me wrong, tell me how arrogant I was to make that statement, and show me there at least 202 shiny Bandai Lotto figures. And if nobody can do that, well then I guess my claim is true. Well, I've finally said everything I have to say about these Bandai Lotto figures. But that's not the end of the video. Remember, these figures are only part of my collection, and I said they would just be the primary focus of this video. We still have more to talk about, though. Let's go back to my figure shelf. The figures I just spent all day showing you only came from the top two shelves of my figure bookshelf. But remember, there's three shelves below that, and plenty of cool figures on them. So, I'm going to kick off a new section of this video that I have been very excited to make. This next section, I'm going to call Honorable Mentions. It's for figures that aren't shiny Bandai Lotto figures, but still deserve to be shown in this video. I'm going to break Honorable Mentions down into several parts, which I will put up on screen as each respective part starts. So, I'm going to clean off my desk of all the Bandai Lotto figures, and we're going to start anew with some different but equally cool figures. Let's go! The first section of Honorable Mentions is for Bandai figures that are shiny, but were not Lotto prizes. Take a look at this Genesect. It was manufactured in 2012, the same year Black and White 2 were released. And if you remember, as soon as Black and White 2 came out, there was a mystery gift available that came with a shiny Genesect. And so, they made a figure to reflect that. However, this shiny Genesect figure was not available as a lotto prize. Instead, you could simply just go to the toy store and buy it. Because of this, it's much less rare and valuable than the rest of the shiny figures I showed you in this video, but I still think it's very cool. The next year, in 2013, they manufactured a new shiny Genesect figure. This time, he's mid-attack. I love this figure, I think it's very cool, but it saddens me that it does not have a non-shiny counterpart. I like for all of my shiny figures to be displayed right next to a non-shiny figure that is identical. And the last figure to show off in this section of honorable mentions just came out in 2021. Celebi. I mentioned earlier in the video how disappointing it is that the Lotto program completely skipped over Gen 2. Yet, in 2021, they released a set of 10 new Bandai figures, most of which were 8th Gen characters. However, it just happened to come with a shiny Celebi. When I heard about this, I pre-ordered the entire set just so I could get my hands on this Celebi. Again, this Celebi is not a lotto prize, but it's just so cool looking. There's just one problem. I looked at every other Celebi that Bandai has ever made, and none of them are sitting and looking to the left. 
which means, just like the mid-attack Genesect, this Celebi must be displayed on the shelf alone. Still, very cool. These are the only three Bandai figures that I know of that are shiny and were not Lotto Prizes, and it's just a big coincidence that the Celebi happened to be released during the same year that I completed my shiny Lotto figure collection. Alright, let's move on to the next section of Honorable Mentions. The next section of Honorable Mentions is for Bandai figures that appear to be shiny, but are not. The case with most of these figures is that I bought them under the false assumption that they were shinies because I just didn't know a whole lot about the Lotto program yet. Let's take a look at this Scyther, for example. This was released in 1998, before the Lotto program ever existed. Later the same year, Bandai released this Scyther. The exact same thing, but a different shade of green. When I saw these two Scyther, I assumed, incorrectly of course, that one was normal and one was shiny. However, they're just both normal Scyther figures. I still think they look pretty cool. Next, let's go to this Kangaskhan figure from 1996. Think to yourself, what would a shiny Kangaskhan figure look like? Well, it would have green accents. So can you really blame me for seeing this Kangaskhan and assuming it's a shiny? In fact, being made in 1996, these figures were made before shinies even existed, let alone the Lotto program. This is simply a limited edition Kangaskhan figure that is slightly translucent, and for whatever reason they made the head of the Kangaskhan and the child green, giving it the appearance of being shiny. Even though it's not a shiny Kangaskhan, I think it's a super cool figure, and I'm happy to have it. Next, let's take a look at a figure from 2004. This is a pretty standard, normal form Deoxys. Now for whatever reason, this figure also exists. I don't know if this is some alternative limited edition form of this figure, or if it's a factory error or what, but when I saw this I had to buy it. If they were trying to make a shiny Deoxys, they would have turned the orange into yellow. I see no reason why they made the little ball here and the line on his face yellow. It doesn't really make sense, but whatever the story behind this figure actually is, I still think it's really cool too. Now, I have one figure left to show you, but it is by far the favorite figure that I'll be showing you in this section of honorable mentions. I had to get a different angle for this figure because we're going to need a little bit of room. Let's take a look at this Butterfree figure from 1996, again, before Shinies existed. However, the same year, 1996, this Butterfree figure was released. Now, how is this not a Shiny? Well, for one, Butterfree's Shiny sprite looks a little bit different than this. It has green eyes, among other differences. This Butterfree is actually inspired directly by the anime. It's the grandfather of all Shinies. Back in 1996, an episode of the anime was released which showed a pink Butterfree flying in a swarm of normal colored Butterfree. This was the inspiration for all Shinies, and this figure is what started the Lotto program. While this was released retail, this allows me to show you an excellent piece of history that I managed to acquire. Check this out. It's the retail box that this Butterfree figure originally came in. Look, they're the same. It also included a Poliwhirl, a Togepi, a Mew, and an Ash, as well as some 26-year-old bubblegum. But as you can see right there, it's got the pink Butterfree. You can see it on the side too. This was inspired directly by the anime, and the creation of that pink Butterfree led directly to the creation of Shinies. I'm so glad that I managed to find this box in an auction site somewhere, because this is truly a piece of history right here. This is not a Shiny, but it's a Pokemon that's a different color than normal, and the reason for that is because this was the inspiration for Shinies. That Butterfree made them think, huh, 
How cool would it be if really rarely Pokemon could just have an entirely different color? Very, very cool. We have now reached the final section of honorable mentions. It's time to talk about shiny Tomy Pokemon figures. Tomy figures will always hold a special place in my heart, as they are how I got started with Pokemon figure collecting. The figures I'm about to show you were all released in retail at some point, though it's important to note that Tomy did have a lotto program very similar to Bandai's, in which they would release limited quantities of shiny figures to sweepstakes winners. I've only seen two of these figures on the internet in my entire life. One was a shiny Chimchar, and the other was a shiny Suicune, and in both cases they went for upwards of $500. Hopefully someday I'll be in a position where I can consider spending that much on a figure, but I had to pass on those when I saw them. The figures I'm about to show you though are still very rare and sought after, as they've been long discontinued. The first figure I'm going to show you is a 4th gen figure. Think to yourself, what is the least exciting shiny in all of 4th gen? Did you say Garchomp? This is the Garchomp that Tomy released in 2007. I think it's a great figure, it looks super cool. For whatever reason, that same year they also decided to release this, a shiny Garchomp. No, this is not some factory quirk that resulted in a Garchomp getting painted with darker paint. This is an official shiny Garchomp figure. I have no idea what made them decide to release a shiny Garchomp figure, but I'm very glad I have it. This figure is actually very rare and hard to come by on the internet nowadays, and it's a lot easier to tell it's a shiny than it is in the original games. The next figure we're going to look at is one of the most iconic shinies of all time. This was released around the time Gold and Silver were released. Here is the first ever Gyarados figure released by Tomy. Very, very cool looking, I love the water base. But in that same year, in accordance with the hype generated by Gold and Silver, they released this. It's a shiny Gyarados, but I'm gonna call it a Red Gyarados, the most iconic shiny of all time. This was released in toy stores and only lasted for about a year, and now you can only find them used on sites like eBay. I'm glad I managed to snag this one before it became really expensive because they're a lot harder to find nowadays. Such a cool figure, such an iconic shiny, I'm so happy I have this. And now it is time to take a look at the last figure I have to show you guys in this video. If you're still watching this video, I sincerely thank you. I don't know how long it's going to be because I haven't edited it yet, but I assume that I've been babbling about Pokemon figures for at least 45 minutes now. The next figure I'm going to show you is the single most rare and most valuable figure in my entire collection. It doesn't even sit with the rest of my Tomy figures. It sits atop my shelf in its very own case overlooking my room. This is truly the crown jewel of my collection, and I've intentionally saved the best for last. This is my Tomy shiny Noctowl figure. Released in the late 90s into retail stores, this figure was discontinued after less than six months. As a result, they've become very rare and very hard to find. I bought mine about five years ago, and I'm glad I did it when I did, because they've only gotten more hard to find since then. This figure is truly my favorite figure. And now that I've shown it to you, I've shown you everything that has to do with my shiny Pokemon figures. I want to thank each and every one of you so much for watching. Stay tuned for my next video.